The first two of the basic quality tools we're going to look at are cause and effect diagrams and Pareto diagrams. Now, cause and effect diagrams are also known as fishbone diagrams or Ishikawa diagrams, depending on the terminology that your particular organization might use. These are useful in helping to trace problems back to their root causes by asking why for a series of times. So we begin with a problem and we ask why that's a problem. And then we ask why a second time based on whatever our answer might have been and so on. Let's take a closer look at how this looks in action. When we start with an Ishikawa diagram, we see that we have the problem placed over to the right hand side. From here, we have different cause categories that are placed throughout each of these different arrays. Now, this is why we refer to this sometimes as a fishbone diagram, because it looks like the skeleton of a fish, where we have each of these major kind of offshoots that have several other smaller bones or smaller subcategories within. And sure enough, that's what we see here as well. There are a variety of primary causes that can shoot off from each different cause category. And then each of these can furthermore have secondary causes. You could have horizontal lines once again jutting off from these that would represent tertiary causes, although fishbone diagrams that get this complex are typically fairly rare. So let's put this into action with an actual example. Here, let's say that our problem is that we're facing a schedule delay. We're simply running behind schedule with our project work and we would like to identify why. Well, there are a variety of different factors that could come into play. We could have issues with our processes, with our people, with the equipment that we're using, perhaps with our materials or the external environment, or it could be on us as managers. Within each of these, we see additional potential answers. When it comes to people, perhaps we haven't trained our people correctly. When it comes to our processes, perhaps our workflows are inefficient. Our equipment might be inferior. We might be working with improper materials. When it comes to the external environment, perhaps we're waiting on more information from a client before we can proceed, or perhaps they need to approve some of the results before we can continue into the next project phase. Just the same, it could be on management internally. Perhaps we haven't issued the approvals that we need to internally in order to continue project work. Now, within a few of these, we might see some secondary causes as well. If we think that it might be an inefficient workflow that's causing us to be behind schedule, then maybe our steps aren't optimized. Maybe we're simply taking too many steps on a process and we could trim these down in order to make things more efficient. Or we could have duplicative work. Perhaps we've been using different code to accomplish the same task several times in the case of a software application we might be developing. When it comes to materials, perhaps we see that they're of poor quality or that they're the wrong materials entirely either of which could also contribute to a delay. Fishbone or Ishikawa diagrams like this can be very helpful in tracking down the specific causes, getting past the more generic answers that people might originally give when asking them why a problem might have arisen. Instead, you can continue to dig down further to find not just the surface issue, but what's truly causing any delays or other problems within your project. The second quality tool we're going to discuss is Pareto diagrams. Now, this is a special hybrid of a bar and line chart. First, we see the bar chart, but then we see this line chart on top of it. Now, on the x-axis of this chart, we see a variety of different categories that can account for 100% of our observations. In this case, we're looking at causes for work stoppages on our project, but we could use this in a variety of other fashions as well. We want to make sure that we add up to 100%, so whatever observations might not fit one of the main categories, we lump together into another category that typically is the smallest category that we'll find on the Pareto diagram. The y-axis, on the other hand, indicates the magnitude of each issue type. In other words, what percent of issues can be attributed to each of these different categories? The bar graph portion of this diagram indicates the percentage of individual causes for the problem at large. In other words, if we're trying to determine what's behind work stoppages, we see that 45% can be attributed to human error, whereas a little more than 30% can be attributed to mechanical failure, and so on. The line graph, on the other hand, indicates the cumulative proportion of causes to the problem. Now, notice that the bar graph from left to right shrinks the most likely categories are found on the left, 
and the least likely, which indicate the smallest percentage, are found on the right. That's no coincidence. That's how a Pareto diagram is meant to display data. We want to have the most common categories on the left-hand side because that helps to inform the line graph, which helps us see how much of the problem is taken care of by getting to each point in the diagram. In other words, we might see that human error plus mechanical failures indicates about 80% of the causes for work stoppages, and that might be where we place most of our emphasis, rather than on trying to control environmental or other issues that we can't necessarily get a good grasp on. This follows the 80-20 rule, which you'll see often not just in business, but also in science and elsewhere. This is a law that goes back to Vilfredo Pareto, which is who the diagram is named after. It helps to identify what sources account for most of a problem's causes, because that's where we have the most marginal benefit. After all, if we can solve the human error and the mechanical failures here, then we'll solve the vast majority of the issues, even though there may be many other issues that contribute to less than 5% of our causes of work stoppages. It's simply not worth attacking those other random disparate issues because the payoff isn't there the way it is if we're able to help tackle human error and mechanical failure in a meaningful way.